Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode in Rust. So today, we're gonna learn about enums. Uh, this is something I'm truly excited to share with you all, because enums in Rust are really a pleasure, and it shows you how much thought was put in to uh, this language. So let's talk about enums in Rust, let's talk about enums, and uh, what you can do with them. Now, I'm sure that all of you are uh, familiar with the standard enum that, you know, is usually correlated to a number. The first one is equal to one, and so forth and so on. And in Rust, that's just not the case. Enums are so much more powerful than that. I'm going to today just quickly show you, and then we're gonna dive in more and more in future episodes where we actually use them to do useful things. So let's use them right now. Let's make an enum. We're gonna make an enum called messages. It's really easy. Just like a struct, you just type in enum and then the name, messages, and uh, curly braces. We now have our enum, but it doesn't have any values. So let's let's give it two, two, two values. We're gonna uh, give the, the first value hello, and we're gonna call the second value quit. Now, if you're familiar with enums, you'll think of these as, you know, just familiar names to integers. And again, that's just not true. So let's do something a little different with these. Instead of just having blank enums like this, let's uh, give them some data. Let's say we want to have a message to change the color. Most of the time you, in, in a, in an, a standard language, you might do something like this. And then you might have a struct message. And, you know, one of the things that it would have a, a type, and that type would be of messages, the e enum. Type is a keyword, so uh, we'll, we'll say message type. And that will be of uh, messages, this enum. All right, and, and this is what you would standard do in most languages. But in, but in Rust, you don't need to do that. And, and then this gets into where you have different messages types and you have to check the type and these have to then inherit from a trait. So you're, you're then making a trait and you gotta go into a lot of work. And, and this gets messy quickly. Rust solves this. What if the enum carries that information? So with change color, we need a new color. So let's uh, say we need an I32. We need another I32, we need another I32. And there, we have the enum change color and we have the information with that message. We have the RGB value. Pretty cool. Now we can actually do something I like a little bit better than this. I don't like this because if you don't know it's RGB, it could be RBG or another, <laughs> another variation of that. And is one of these alpha? Um, is there another I32 here? I don't like using straight tuples like that. Let's uh, let's do something a little bit nicer. Uh, let's say we wanted a message to move to a position, a, a point. Now you could do move like this, and you could uh, for sure have you know we had our point class. Let's uh, let's let's make that struct again. If we all remember, it's just struct point, and then we'll have an X of an I32 and a Y of I32. And we could have this be what this is. It, it can be another struct or yeah. So let's do point right here. Cool. Now we might not want to make a, a complete concrete type for everything we pass in. So another way that you could do this move instead of making this struct would be to do this. For this, you need curly braces, not uh, the other ones. You want uh, X of I32 and a Y of I32. This is I32. Basically, these are named tuples. When you use move now, you'll have an X and Y. And I'll show you how to use that in just a second. But this goes for just about everything else you could want. Let's make a message uh, right. This message takes a string, so we're going to write a string. You know, there's a bunch of different things you could do with this. I'm just giving you examples. And you know, let's go ahead and use that uh, that point 
and we'll just make this uh, change position. Check this out. We have an enum of messages that have data. Now, we haven't used it yet, so let's just go over that really, really quickly. Like a struct, you can actually do impuls or implementations for enums. That's right. You can do implementations for enums. Let's do an implementation for this. One thing that we might want to do is just print the data. We might want to print data, whatever the message is. So let's call this print message. We're going to do an impl, just like we did for structs, for messages. And in here, we're going to make a function that takes self. So we'll just do fn print data. And as we learned, our reference to self in here, this makes it a method, not just a function of self. And we're off. Now, the great thing that you can do here with uh, enums is you can actually uh, match on, on the enum. It's match, again, is kind of like a really awesome case statement. It's way better than case, but it's like it. So let's match on self. And in here, uh, if, if you see it, it's red, and that's because it says uh, it missing match references. It, it knows that we need some. So let me fill these in really, really quickly. Uh, the first thing you have to do is you have to understand that this hello enum is scoped to this. So you can't just match on hello. It, you'll have to notice that you'll either have to use the capital self or you'll have to use messages hello. I like to use hell, uh, messages the, that instead of uh, self. Um, I usually use, I usually don't use the keyword self, even though it's valid. I like being explicit. All right. And in here, we can just do a print line of uh, hello and check it out. This is awesome. Now you'll notice it's still upset, and that's because, well, we need a lot more, a lot more case statements. Let's get those done and done. Now let's go over these really, really quickly. All right, so quit was just the same. There was no data, but let's talk about how we're starting to access data. With change color, we broke the tuple up into R, G, and B. Now these weren't named so that they, they, they didn't have to be R, G, B. You could also have made this, you could make this A, A if you had wanted to, uh, but that would have been really confusing because it's obviously RGB, so let's change that back to R. But you can see this is breaking the tuple apart. You're matching on this, and if it is this, then here, in this scope over here, and remember, in a match statement, if you want it to be multi-line, you can go ahead and make it multi-line, just like that. So in this scope here, the, the enum's values, the values that were contained in that enum, are RGB. Super cool, and we can print them out. And that goes the same with the, what I'm calling the named tuple or the anonymous struct. That's another way to think about it is anonymous struct. It, with the anonymous struct, you're doing the exact same thing. You're giving this X and Y, but these are actually X and Y. They, they need to be X and Y because they actually have a type with them. That's super cool. I like using this a lot, especially if it's something like a point that you don't want to recreate that struct for. So here we have a string, pretty simple. It's a string. In here, we have our complex type, another struct. We're containing another struct inside of this change position. And you can see that we're, we're using it just like we are uh, uh, the an anonymous struct, the, the, the name tuple, the anonymous struct. Probably should figure out which one to call that, but not quite sure. But we're using it almost the exact same. We have to declare that it's a point. That's fine. And we can use it there too. So let's actually, let's actually use this print data method. Let's not, let's not just talk about it. Let's use it. Let's go here to our main function here and let's use this method. Let hello message equal a new message hello. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. We, we have a hello message. Let's go ahead and use this new method that we have. We just called print data. Let's run this and see if it actually prints our data. Now, as we would expect, this would, should, if everything goes right, 
print out hello. And absolutely, it printed out hello, exactly what we were expecting. Now, I wanted to point out something here. Uh, just this is getting you warmed up to traits. That is coming very soon. What if we wanted to do this? Print line, hello message. Because this, this print line should actually print the exact same stuff. You'll notice this has an error. And this error is saying that messages doesn't implement STD format display. Now I know we haven't talked about traits and we'll go in more detail with this. But the only thing that I wanted to prove here was that you can deal with these just like you would a struct. So you don't have to think, oh, if only I had a struct here, this would work. No, 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 you can actually do that implementation. Now I'm gonna throw that implementation in here and the code's going to be there for it. But again, we're not gonna delve too deeply into it. It's just what it is. I just want you to understand that just because it's an enum, you don't have to think of it as a second class anything. It's a first class everything. Maybe even structs are the second class enum. Think about it that way. And now you can see that this has its own uh, format message. We, we have implemented FMT display for our enum messages. So again, we're gonna get more into traits very shortly in the next two episodes. And when we do that, you're gonna get to, you're gonna understand a little bit more of what's happening here. But I just wanted you to realize that enums are awesome. Enums are awesome. All right, let's uh, go ahead and print out a few more of these. So here we're just doing a change position using a point. Now you could declare a point up here. Absolutely, you could do this. And then you could use this point. And that works just as well. Easy. Okay. Uh, let's let's run this and see if it prints the point like we might expect. So we got our hello. We got our second hello from the print line here because we uh, implemented format, and we got change position to 130. That's that's what our uh, print data did. If we wanted to look up here, we have our print data for change position, and it says change position to the x and y. Super super super. All right, and I just did it with the change color. As you can see, here's the, the color information. We're giving it white as a color, and that's awesome, and it will print that. And then uh, the move message, again, this is that uh, anonymous struct uh, uh, named tuple, and you can see right here, it works just how you would expect it to. Now, before we move on, before we do something else, I wanted to point out some of the places you've already been using enums, and so you start to understand some of the power of them. Let's talk about this result. We talked about error handling, and you know another type that we talked about was the sum and none. Uh, so sum, sum, uh, you know. Now we haven't talked about generics, and that is also in the next three lessons. So don't worry about that because these do have generics, and oh yeah. Like I said, they're first class citizens. So enums can be generic too. These are actually, this option, option is a enum. And these are actually none and some are, are enums, are, are values of the option. And some, don't, don't worry about this, this is just telling you when it was stable and, and, and whatnot, is of generic type. So when it wraps your data, it's wrapping that generic T. You know, in this case here, we're wrapping an I32. Result, result is of type T and type E. This is the, the return type, and this is the error type. As you can see, error takes the E, and OK takes the T. Super, super cool. The really awesome thing about how a lot of the standard library is written it's written not using any special compiler or special feature. A lot of these things like result are written in such a way you could implement them yourself. You could copy and paste all this code and you would have your own error type. Awesome. That is super cool. So I just wanted you to see that because enums, and this is something I still tr struggle with today, I don't always leverage enums to their fullest because I'm not always thinking about them as this powerful inference machine. 
they really are super powerful and can do a bunch of different things. A classic example would be IP address. Is it an IPv6 or an IPv4? Well, that's a fantastic enum. There, there's a whole bunch of really great examples, and, and yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say right now. Now, obviously, as we learn more about traits, as we learn more about memory management, as we learn more about generics, we're gonna learn more about enums because all of those things also apply to enums just as much as they do with structs. So in those lessons, I'm gonna try to mix and match structs and enums back and forth, so hopefully it doesn't get confusing, uh, to help, you know, solidify how powerful enums are. That's really it for me today. I hope you learned something. I hope you're excited about this because really, as soon as I started wrapping my mind around enums uh, in Rust, uh, I really found myself wanting these in almost every single language I have touched. They are really fantastic. I hope that you find them just as fantastic as I have found them. And I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day.